Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us again. In this segment, going to have a conversation with Dr. Jeanette Hill, the founder of Spot On Sciences. She's joining us on the program to talk about Spot On Sciences. Welcome to the program, Dr. Jeanette Hill. How are you? I'm just fine. Thank you. Well, a brief background uh, about yourself, and then let's talk about uh, your company, uh, Spot On Sciences. How did you come to uh, found Spot On? Uh, Yes, so my background is in pharmaceutical research. I have a a PhD in bioorganic chemistry, and I've worked with thousands of of samples, biological samples, and didn't really think about where they came from until one day I was talking with my mother, and she lives in a rural community. She um, has, you know, several chronic diseases, and she has to get her blood tested quite often. And I found out to do that, she has to um, travel about an hour each way to just get a blood um, piece of blood drawn. And she couldn't take her medicine. You know, it took hours and she couldn't. um, It it actually made her sick just to get a blood sample. And I thought, this is ridiculous. And we had just started using something called the dried blood spot um, technology that's been around for about 50 years with newborn screening. And I thought, well, that's such a good technique. Why aren't the rest of us using that? And it turns out it's surprisingly hard to get a good blood sample. It's one thing for the newborns having a nurse in a a sterile hospital, uh, but when you give it to people out in their kitchens or kind of out in the wild, um, you know, just chaos ensues. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is set out to develop a device, the Hemaspot, to basically make the sample collection foolproof to to solve the problems that that people could create when they're trying to get a good blood sample. Is it a device that takes the sample and then stores it dry, drying it out and storing it and Mm -hmm. then for shipment or... Mm -hmm. Is that, is that how it works? Uh, yes. So what it is is a, a small uh, blue device and a, a plastic um, cartridge. And what the patient or the, the person taking the sample uh, will open a sealed um, package um, with has a drying uh, desiccant inside. And then they have a lancet and they stick their finger and then put two drops of blood onto the cartridge. And it goes inside and spreads out on a filter paper and then um, has a desiccant inside, and so they can simply close the sample, it dries, and once it's dry, it's stable at room temperature for, they've had some stored for up to 40 years that they can still um, get good, good testing from. And so then it's very easy to put, you know, in an envelope in the mail or give it to a drone or drop it in a box. Um, And then once it gets to the lab, they can do all kinds of testing from that. Was there was there different lab testing lab tests for this type of device, or is it just any general lab that takes any type of samples? So probably about ninety percent of the tests we do now can be done um, with the dried blood. Um, it is um, you have to do a slight modification in the lab, um, but basically once you get the blood, you take the sample and, and wet it um, and get it in solution. Um, then the testing is basically the same. The problems that we kind of solved um, with developing this device is mainly um, to for the blood to dry. It usually takes a couple of hours um, in the air to dry, and it doesn't dry well. You know, if it's raining outside, if it's really humid, so it's going to you know dry differently in the Amazon than in you know the desert somewhere. Um, so the desiccant inside dries it uniformly um, and rapidly. Um, also, having it out in the open air, um, we've heard stories about people collecting it in, you know, like a remote area, like in, in um, a small town in Africa, uh, where the flies land on it, lay eggs, and it, you know, it just gets, you know, really, it can really get contaminated. Um, and so, and then also to simplify how the blood flows out on the paper, um, our device makes it flow evenly, um, so that also uh, was a major improvement. Uh, We have a second device, so one is for whole blood, and then the second device actually separates the uh, red blood cells from the um, plasma. And so that is beneficial. Some tests it's difficult to do from whole blood because the red blood cells, you know, the color interferes with the test. Mm -hmm. And so that's also been very um, um, used for a lot of different testing. Is Spot On Sciences only involved in the uh, collection of dried blood samples? 
Um, yes, it is. Um, blood. We also have a new product that we're working on um, for tissue samples. Mm-hmm. And so that you can do uh, molecular testing, like testing DNA or different chemicals or, or metabolites um, in the tissue. So in, in addition to tissue, I guess but, other fluids as well? Um, it can be for other fluids. We've had it used for uh, saliva, uh, for urine. Um, so you know, it, basically anything that you can dry, um, any biological fluid um, can be used for that. Is this dried blood sample good across the board for any type of detection when it comes to, uh, say, early detection of, of this disease or even detection of other substances in the blood for analysis? Um, it can be used for drug detection. Um, a question we get that is how do you, you know, monitor that it's actually the person, you know, collecting the sample. And it's basically the same, you know, that you would collect any other blood or urine. You'd have to have somebody there watching it. Although it's a lot easier to collect a blood sample, seeing somebody stick their finger and put a drop of blood on than it is to um, follow them into the uh, bathroom for a urine sample. So, (laughs) Absolutely. But but basically you would have to monitor. Yeah. And I'm sorry to, to... Continue the um, the other testing that you can do. Um, you can do everything from DNA, um, you know, genotyping, or um, looking for RNA um, in the blood for uh, kind of cancer testing, um, metabolites, um, HbA1c, which is used for um, diabetes testing. Um, almost any type of, of test you can do. Only test that you cannot do is ones that require a whole cell because the drying of the Draw, the drying of the blood um, does destroy the cell. So something like a complete blood count, uh, the way they're currently done, cannot be done with the dried blood. You know, lots of people have been um, who are, are diabetic have been doing uh, finger sticks for for as you, for a lot of years. A lot of people that are getting uh, tested for mm-hmm. uh, donating blood, they they get that traditional finger stick to to test. Um, but the people people who mm-hmm. haven't traditionally had familiarity with uh, finger sticks or self administered uh, you know pinpricks, how is uh, are there like awareness campaigns that uh, spot on you know do you go in and give training to your your patients or is it something that you leave up to whomever uh, is distributing the device? Mm-hmm. Um, So we do have um, instructions that come with the kit if you're going to do a home collection. Um, So it's actually very easy and, you know, you feel a little bit of a a prick, but it it really doesn't hurt. Although sometimes it's a bit hard to convince people of that until they've actually done it. Um, In a lot of scenarios, um, people will collect blood at a, you know, a clinic or you'll have a, a health aid that collects blood out in the field. Say if you're doing a survey for an infection infectious disease, um, seeing who might be infected. Well, um, is there some place that our listeners can go online and get some more information about uh, your company, Spot On Sciences? Uh, yes, the web, uh, website is spotonsciences.com. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Hill, uh, for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this evening. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio with Dr. Jeanette Hill. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at 8pr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.